Thank you. You got the F star. You did it. You got it down good. Or up good, rather. Not down. It's a high note. All right. You all know recalls. Everybody knows recalls. You've had your car recalled. You've had cribs recalled. You've had all kinds of toys recalled because of lead paint. There's all kinds of recalls going on all the time. The lessons today, we're talking about recalls. And what in particular we're talking about is recalling that you must do, be recalled back to your original call, to faith. You'll note that Jesus uh, basically summarizes to Nicodemus uh, what the call is to which you and I have been called. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. That is your original call to faith. And because of that call to faith, it is one that you have lived or tried to live and also forget. So we constantly need to be recalled to the faith that was our original call. And that will occur in all kinds of ways. Uh, uh, with uh, Abram and Sarah, for example, uh, in, in the first reading, the, they were called uh, to a new geographic location. And they were not sure, even when they accepted that call, in faith, what the destination was going to be. They just went, in the beginning, from Ur, you are, that uh, if you ever get on a tour and you go to Iraq, is in the southern part of Iraq, and it is there, the ruins. And from there, they went up the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. I'm pushing your geography now, pay attention. And they go up those river valleys and get up to the southern part of Turkey. And they get then to Haran. Haran is a real place, it exists today. You will know that it exists because if you go Google it, all of the houses look like beehives. Because that is the kind of house that they can make given the materials at hand and on hand. So all of the houses are, what is it, that bubble? Dumb. Beehive? Dome. Dome. You didn't call me dumb. Dome. Dome. All right. All right, I wasn't sure which it was for a moment. The dome, okay? The whole town of Iran is domes because that's the kind of mud material that works in building those houses and they're reasonably easy to maintain and repair. Then from Haran, they go south to Canaan, which is what Israel was called before it became Israel. And they end up in Canaan, and they think that's the promised land. The only thing they know is this. Pay attention, because this is where you are too. We are heirs of this, and we still live in this promise, that you're going to be given land and you're going to be a great nation. By that, they don't mean a nation state with geographic borders for us. Uh, you will be blessed. Your name will be great. And you yourself will be a blessing. So those are the constituent parts of the calling to which you've been called. Abram and Sarah believed that. They ended up in Canaan. They go down there. Well, what does it mean to be a blessing? Well, the first thing they realize is to try to get along with people, to try to help your neighbor as much as you can. First thing that happens, they go down there and they dig a well, find some land, and they get into an argument with family members over the well. This branch of the family wants the well that they dug. So what do they do? Abram and Sarah do the right thing. They give those, that branch of the family the well and they move. And then they dig another well in another location. Well, guess what? They have neighbors. And the neighbors think that well is so good, and there's a lot more of them than there is of Abram and his family. So they move again. And finally, they end up at a location that nobody wants. And they dig another well, and it's blessed with water. And so they have received their blessing. They have been insulted diminished, but they have also forgiven. They have not engaged in war. 
and they have a home in a place called Canaan that they don't know if it's their real permanent location or not. In any case, they build lives there. And in the building of those lives, they practice that gift of faith, namely being a blessing to their community, such as it is, and to the land itself by bringing agriculture to it and by bringing a sense of order to it and a sense of beauty. And so they're practicing the blessings that God has called them to practice. Uh, they have to be recalled, as you know, uh, from time to time, as we all, what you do too. You all have to be recalled, as do I, to our initial, initial calling, because you don't always remember that your job is to be a blessing to everybody that you hang out with and meet and are supposed to help. Sometimes you're a jerk <laughs> and you just decide you're not going to help because you're in a bad mood and you get all uppity or you just decide that you don't want to work with other people just because you don't because you can do it faster and better by yourself rather than working with a committee or a team of people because they're a pain in the neck and it takes twice as long and I'm not going to bother. So as a result, you end up being no blessing at all <laughs> to anybody, including yourself, because all you have managed to do is agitate yourself too. So we have to be recalled to our original calling, which is to be a blessing to others. And remember at the same time, our own history as individuals recalling all of the blessings that we have grown with that have followed us through our lives remembering our own autobiography that we have gotten to where we are today because other people because of their faith have blessed us And most of the time, they're easy to forget because we have short memories and we cultivate short memories because it's just oh so much easier to not have to say thank you to so many people who have brought us to where we are today. Uh, I, had a, I, had, I had a phone call from, uh, from somebody and I must confess I was having a day I was in one of my crabby, cranky, uppity moods. And I had had a phone call with somebody else on short notice. I didn't want to talk to anybody. So I answered the phone. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was on my home phone. What do you want? Because I recognized the voice. Not a member of our church. It's a, uh, somebody I hadn't talked to in some months. My mom's in a nursing home, they're going to kick her out. Yeah. Well, what do you want me to do about it? <laughs> well, you know about this stuff, so tell me what to do. I said, all right, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to the Office on Aging in that county you live in, and you're going to get your, their advice, and they're going to tell you what I'm going to tell you, is that your mom doesn't have squat and they're not going to kick her out of the nursing home unless you let them. What you have to do is go to the Office on Aging and you have to go to the nursing home and they are going to work with you in their office and they're going to come up with the fact that she has nothing and they can't kick her out because she's got nowhere to go because she can't live in her own apartment. So just do it. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right, see you. Let me know how it goes. Yeah, my wife heard that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, she did. <laughs> she said, who was that? Oh, I told her. You know, you were really pretty rough, pretty hard, pretty mean. And I said, yeah. <laughs> what do you say? 
Syria, there's nothing to say from there, except that that's true. That's because I had forgotten my original call to be a blessing. And that phone call made me recall my blessing of all of those who have helped me and my reason for being alive in this world. And so, I did not answer any more phone calls. <laughs> no, I'm serious, I did not. And I just went to my room for a while. <laughs> okay, yeah, you know how, man. yeah. Go to your room for a while, <laughs> which I did. But, don't miss the point because the point is true for you too. You forget, and you get caught up in yourself, and your own issues, and your own needs, and your own aches and pains. Oh, Lord bless us all. We have so many issues. I can barely take it. And that's not true, because the blessings abound. You have family who love you dearly who may be a pain on occasion, but they love you and care for you. You have friends who would love to be real, true friends. You have people at work who will take time to talk with you. You've got dozens of people in this church who will take time for you. The blessings abound from God, all of them designed to recall you to the blessing that you are in your life. And that is what Jesus was trying to teach Nicodemus. Don't forget, you were born, yeah, of the flesh, as we all are. But you're also born by God of the Spirit, that internal working in you which causes you to be mindful that you're more than just flesh and blood, that you're spirit and spirited windy and you move and you groove and you work and you help and you be a blessing and people wonder where in the heck you came from and where you're going to next but that's the spirit present in us and it's the gift that Jesus gives to us by virtue of both of our, bap our, our baptism and by virtue of being alive and by virtue of being with other Christian people who are likely in the same position of recalling and calling themselves back to their baptism. That's the gift which has been given to Nicodemus that Jesus was pointing out, that God so loves the world that he gave his only son so that you and I may be a blessing to this world on his behalf and in his name. The next time you start getting uppity, cranky, crazy, thinking you're the only intelligent person in the whole batch, <laughs> working alone because you're the only smart one, recall your blessings and recall your call. You're a blessing to the world. It's not about you but it's about the world we live in and the goodness which you bring to it. <laughs>